Hello everybody, Lawrence Fleming here. Well this one's going to be, this video is going to be a little bit technical, but I'll try to keep it simple. We have some interesting times here. I watched um, James Kaddish and Tom Hughes yesterday on their program, and they were talking about this chat program that's out there, chat, uh, what is it? GPT. I have to get my glasses on so I can read my computer here in front of me. Chat GPT, yes. You can Google it. If you want to set up an account and log in and type in stuff, you can. It's an AI test. There's a bigger version of it somewhere, but this is just out there for they want the public to just come in and just throw things at it and see what we can come up with. We've talked about AI in the past. There's science fiction movies about it. One of them's The Terminator. It's about computers going uh, off in the wrong direction. That's the fear that if you program these things to have autonomous capability, you know, they're trying to get our cars so that they can drive without a driver. Just take you where you need to go and they have to make up the, the choices along the way. That's the part of AI that we are looking at. We can program a computer that if something happens you respond this way. If something else happens you respond this way. You've probably seen these little charts and little bubbles and you know if, if, if this is the answer go left and otherwise no go right. You know, whatever it is, you can make these little charts up. Those are limited functions. There aren't that many options built into that. But let's say that at each junction, there are unlimited options. Well, you've got to give the ability, the human type ability of intelligence to make a decision based on what, they're, what that computer program knows children learn. They get smarter as they grow older because they've got a larger database. Our brains, even in today's day and age, it would take a city block computer to be able to equal the number of synapses that we have in our brain. And it would take potentially uh, a lifetime of that computer to be able to educate it. <clears throat> it's got to have experiences. It's got to know that if, if something's on fire, you don't touch it. A child doesn't know that. They're going to put their hand right into the fire and get burnt. They won't do it again in most cases. But computers are different. Now, again, you know I'm a big movie buff. So we can go all the way back to the, to the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey. They had their computer in there. The computer was called HAL. I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. Open the hot pod bay doors, HAL. The computer was, giving, was given conflicting information and it had to make a choice. The only thing the computer didn't have was compassion to let the guys die on the ship because the mission had to be completed. Okay. And in modern times, we've had the Terminator. Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm going to pump you up. We had a few of that little franchise. <clears throat> Now, they did some extra things. They did some time travel and things like that, which makes it even more complicated. Going back in time and eliminating ancestors so that there wouldn't be someone to develop a way around it. But that artificial intelligence was out there. We're developing artificial intelligence for everything. My oldest son works with artificial intelligence. He had a company, and I don't know if he still does or not. <clears throat> I don't get to talk to him very much. He's into computers. 
which I was too, but he's state of the art now because he's dealing with artificial intelligence. As with anything, you can make something for good or for bad. You've got to put safeguards in. If you remember the uh, movie Forbidden Planet, Robbie the Robot, in the little scene where they said, well, couldn't some, some kind of a robot like that cause all kinds of destruction and kill, peop kill people? And they said, you know, well, let me give you a demonstration. And he hands them a gun and tells them to point it at the captain and says, pull the trigger. And all kinds of things started flipping around. And he came back and said, if I didn't cancel the order, he would just melt down right there because he's conflicted between his compassion programming and the order that was told to do. We have to hopefully get to the point where that's in there. What's going to happen with an autonomous vehicle if there's a problem and there are two paths to go and there's an old lady on this path and a mother and a baby over here and the car's got to go one way or the other. How is it going to decide that? You know, it's the Solomon gambit. You know, the baby. Let's cut the baby in half. And the real mother says no. Wisdom. You've got to be able to give these autonomous entities wisdom as well. Okay, so why are we doing this? What is the purpose of this? Well, Satan has tried numerous times to corrupt mankind. He's pretty good at it. But the most effective one that he did was when the angels came down to the earth and had relations with the women down here. It corrupted the DNA. Out of the lineage, somewhere they have to get you know, to Joseph and Mary so that we can get Jesus. God already had this planned out. Satan came in and corrupted the DNA. That's the primary reason for the flood. Because the corrupted DNA was so bad, it couldn't go through. He picked, what, eight? No one in his family? Be the only survivors, because their DNA was not corrupted, apparently. And they were faithful to God. I mean, he could have just, if it was a city, he could have done like Sodom and Gomorrah and just destroyed a city. <clears throat> but I'm confident that it was the, the corrupted DNA. They couldn't connect to God. And they're trying to do that again now. Our world leaders, they want to put a chip in you, embed a chip. The chip will help to control you. Is another chip that they want to put or a mark that they want to put in you so you can't buy or sell. That's also a form of control. But if you can put a chip in the brain, that's really important. Now, there's a program out there. You can check it out. I watched James Kadesh and Tom Hughes, as I've said in one of the little videos I recorded. You can find this. It's called Chat GPT. It's a website you can go to and you can ask it questions. <clears throat> I asked it a question and I'm just going to bring this around and let you see my laptop. Now I'm going to put some video at the end of some samples that I recorded as I was doing them. This is real time. And what I put in here, as I put in a question, is AI dangerous? Uh, AI can pose risk if not developed, used, and regulated responsibly. Some potential dangers include bias in decision making, leading to unfair treatment of individuals, misuse of AI in harmful ways such as autonomous weapons, terminator, job displacement due to automation, Privacy concerns with the collection and use of data. Every one of these things the enemy would love to have control of, so just think about that. However, AI has many potential benefits such as improving healthcare, transportation, autonomous cars, 
and scientific discovery. It's important to balance the risk and benefits through responsible development and regulation. Now, I asked, um, I asked ChatGBT to write a sermon And let's see if I've got that here on. Okay. <clears throat> this is the sermon that it wrote. I don't do this with any of my other stuff. So when you're getting my, my morning videos, I'm writing these. I did this for demonstration purposes only, and I won't do it again. You could have it do all this. So write a sermon about AI and chat GBT was the instruction. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's world, artificial intelligence, AI, and chatbots like ChatGPT are becoming increasingly prevalent in our daily lives. As technology continues to advance, it is important for us to consider the ethical implications and responsibilities that come with these developments. For a biblical perspective, we know that God has given us the gift of intelligence and creativity. And it's up to us to use these gifts for good. AI and chatbots like ChatGPT have the potential to greatly benefit humanity by improving our lives in numerous ways, such as providing quick access to information, automating tedious tasks, and even uh, improving medical diagnosis. However, these advancements come with potential consequences that we may also like to consider for example, increasing reliance on AI and chatbots could lead to job loss and increased inequality or the spread of false information if not properly regulated. You could send something around the world as it is now. Imagine having a, an AI bot. That's all I'm supposed to do. Just send lies around the world. Okay, back to our reading. Again, it wrote this entire thing. It's our duty as followers of Christ to use technology responsibly and ethically. This means ensuring that AI and chatbots are used for the betterment of society and not for personal gain or harm. It also means being vigilant against the spread of false information and using our critical thinking skills to evaluate the information we received from these technologies. In conclusion, let us remember that we as we continue to explore and harness the power of AI and chatbots, we must do so with wisdom, discernment, and a heart of greater good. May God bless and guide us in this endeavor. Amen. Chatbot wrote this. It will make sure, in listening to Kadesh and Hughes talk about it, it will make sure that you're not plagiarizing. I've seen things on here where it says, write a rap song, and it wrote a rap song. You can basically have it do anything. It is artificial intelligence. You're teaching it to think. And <clears throat> theoretically, any kind of intelligence will grow, will great gain in its ability to do the things the right way. <clears throat> like I said, if you put your hand in fire, you get burned. Computers are gonna have to learn their limits. This is out there now. You can Google it and just you know, sign in, create an account, sign in, and <clears throat> if you go to the actual page, first page, where it has try chat GPT on it, um, optimizing language models for dialogue. We've trained a model called chat GPT, which interacts in a conversational way. The dialogue format makes it possible for ChatGPT to answer follow-up questions, admit its mistakes, challenge incorrect premises, and reject inappropriate requests. ChatGPT is a sibling model to instruct GPT, which is trained to follow instructions in a prompt and provide a detailed response. <clears throat> okay, so they're trying to get this stuff to grow. So they've got these different levels that they're working on. This is an open, free source version that you can log into and post questions to. James Kadish says he knows 
couple of pastors that have been using this to write up sermons. Why would you do that? I don't know. This needs to come from God. When I'm talking, I'm talking as if God has given me the information to give to you. That's why I open myself up. I ask God for forgiveness before I even start any of this stuff to make sure that I'm okay. But this is the direction that we're going in. If you have an AI computer out there and you mean it for good, most likely you will get good out of it. It's going to learn, it's going to make mistakes. But if you mean it for bad, you're going to get bad out of it. You know, computers can be taught to talk. You can take text and convert text to voice. That's just a simple program. But the computer's not thinking. Somebody used to write this. I remember the very first computer game ever written. Well, big enough for the, for the country to be able to use it anyway. It was called Adventure. It was a text only game, no graphics. Some of you might remember, you know, Zork or some of these other text games. But Adventure was played on mainframes. And you simply had to tell it to do things. And you say, go north. So it takes you to the next grid. North, this is all in the computer mind. It's not something that we're going to see because this is all text. And it will describe the scene. It says, you're, our, you're in a valley and you've got mountains to the left and mountains to the right and there is a mountain in front of you with the pass if you want to go that way and it describes you know there may be a lake it describes all that and then you say well uh, go to the rock on the right if it told you that there's a rock on the right and you get there it take again moves the grid to that rock on the right and it says sitting on top of the rock is a frog and you can type in Talk to the frog. Okay, that's how adventure game worked. But every response had to be programmed into it. If you said, hello frog, to the so-called frog on the, on the rock, the frog may go, ribbit, or he may come back and say, hi, I'm a talking frog. This is the way the game was written. But every response had to be programmed. AI, you don't have to do that. AI will learn what it needs to do. The autonomous vehicles that are out there now, the Teslas and the other vehicles that are trying to learn to drive, aren't perfect. <clears throat> you can't come up with a perfect world ever without God. Okay? And we're not going to have that perfect world until we're with Him. Because this world is not perfect. That's why He's going to destroy it. He's going to create a new heaven and earth. Because this world is part of the original corruption. He created it right, but it's had too many things go wrong on this planet that he's going to get rid of it and recreate it. What's the new one going to look like? I don't know. Look at what our creator has created. Just look behind me. I'm outdoors and all the things that he created here. So he can do this again. He can make everything exactly the same. <clears throat> or the leaves could be purple and the trees blue and, and the sky red. Whatever he wants to do, he's going to do and it's going to be pleasing to us because it will be pleasing to him. We're in his, his image, remember. So whatever, that, whatever the world we're going to get into, it's going to be uh, so much better and it's not going to be corrupted. He tends to get rid of things that are corrupted. Okay, so as we go forward in this time frame, <clears throat> you don't know if you're online, if you're talking to a person or a bot. There are bots out there right now on social media. Their job is to come in and interact. I have bots on my channel that you're watching on. You can see them. They come in and they dump, you know, a page and a half of information. It's the same page and a half every time they come in. They don't do it every day, but maybe once a week. I let them stay if I, if I like what they're posting. If I don't like what they're posting, I may get rid of them or block them. 
<coughs> or just simply knowing that it's a bot, I might just delete it. Don't come in and dump page after page after page on my YouTube site and then have it wrong. I'm not even going to carry on a conversation. It's block and delete. If you want to find out what's going on, ask questions. But don't come in and tell me what you're doing. One, I have to assume you're human, but you could be a bot. And bots are out there all the time causing trouble. I've had bots come in and swear at everybody on, on the channel. Well, you try to carry on, on a conversation and after a little while you realize you're getting the same answers because they're not that smart. Chatbots aren't that smart, smart most of the time. This chat GBT is a large organized chat. And it's pretty good. You saw the little mini sermon that it wrote. I read it to you. It can do a lot of things, but it can become a crutch. And if it writes, it writes the message, what is, how is God involved? Is God involved in this AI? Probably not. It knows enough to write something that sounds good, but Satan can sound good. And there might just be one little thing that's out of place that's not true, but it's embedded in all this other stuff and you don't catch it. That's how Satan works. It's just interesting to see where we're going. I don't want anybody going there and letting it you know, run their lives, but just see where it's going. And you see the cars that are out there. Everything is getting ready to take off. Hopefully we're getting ready to take off too, but I can't give you a date. I won't try. Don't anybody else try. And I get people coming on here all the time going, well, this is going to happen on this specific date, and then, then this is going to happen. How do you understand that? How do you know that? Give me the scripture. They don't. It's an opinion. And you need to state that. In my opinion, this is going to happen first. In my opinion, the rapture is close. We don't know. In my opinion, the Magog War is not coming right away. I used to think it was up front, but there's too much destruction in it. But that's my opinion. We know all the things that are going to happen. But we just don't know the timing, and we're not supposed to. One, we won't be here for most of it. And two, some of the stuff is to keep it away from Satan. He's not supposed to know. If Satan knew that if Christ was crucified, he would rise again, but he'd go to hell first, uh, get everybody out of paradise, conquer hell, come back up, and be seen by 5,000 or however many it was. That is something that he would not have allowed to happen, but he didn't know. God knew. I don't think, I don't think Jesus knew all of it, because he was still human. He knew basically what he had to go through. He knew he was going to the cross, that he knew. He said to God, "Who goes another jet?" He didn't say, "Who goes another jet?" To God, uh, it's very foggy. I had to come down here and wipe down the table. If it had rained, this would be dry. But because it was fog, it was just constantly being covered. I can kind of feel moisture in the air, just kind of settling right now. This is a, a really big fog, so I call it an, a, an Italian fog. It's a big a mist. Okay, sorry for the puns. They don't get any better. Okay, so you got to be careful on social media. and You got to know that where we're going is going to be very interesting. If things were to get rough, if we were to go to war, our fearless leader would probably disappear. They wouldn't kill him. He'd go underground, whatever. And then you'd get all these messages from him. 
Would they really be from him? They could be an AI bot programmed to talk like him. There could be a person who knows enough of his mannerisms and sayings that could also take over. He could get killed if we're at war or something like that could happen. And they could keep him hidden away. They could even do, because of CGI, they could even create him and make it come out of a, a video that's very distorted because it's the power is low and they don't have the transmission right or whatever. And you could have him talking and you he may not look 100% right, but then the, the video is not 100% right, so you kind of deal with it. Technology can do a lot of things. It can't completely replace us yet, but they're heading for that. There'd be a line for the chip. Get the chip implanted in your brain, and you won't have to think anymore. It'll tell you what to think. You're not smart in math. We'll program the chip for math for you to make it easier for you. You want to learn how to do things like in the matrix? Get the chip. And we'll be able to program your brain like in the matrix. That may be the, the ruse to get you to get the chip. In the meantime, it's programming your brain to hate God, to follow Satan. Be very careful. The people that are running this world are servants of the devil. And they're not going to do anything for your, for your personal good if it doesn't help Satan. And we don't want to be a part of that. We still have to obey the government. The Bible tells us to. Until it tells us to do something against the will of God, then we can refuse to do it. But otherwise, it's like Jesus said, whose face is on the coin? Caesar's. Well, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto God what is God's. But there is a line, and you've got to stay on the right side of the line. Okay, it's going to get dangerous. At the end, I'm going to put some more samples that I recorded on my laptop here. But you can go there yourself. Just Google it, chat GPT. And it takes you to an open AI thing, and it, so don't worry about the address. Uh, you can get into it. And somebody could theoretically put up a fake site and do some of the same stuff, so just be careful. It's computer stuff. And don't, don't download and click on links, because there's so many things out there that can take over your computer and use your computer to spam. Okay, be safe. God is coming back soon, but the world is not bad enough yet. Be prepared. Have food stores, but hide tracks in them. Okay, God bless. Okay, so here's our chat. I've logged into chat. GPT, and I'm going to type in, is AI dangerous? Hit enter, and let's see what we get. Come on, computer, don't. Huh, why won't it come into focus? There we go. So you can just read that. That was, if it's used wrong or programmed wrong, it can be a problem. I'll include this and some other examples at the end so you can go there and look. Well, at least it's accurate in the last sentence. The rapture is not known and cannot be predicted. Other than the fact that it's coming soon. I want to 
I want you to see the <clears throat> computer typing. Here's a question I typed in, something we're familiar with, and you can see the response. You can read it. I don't know if I can get in a little closer. There we go. Here's some sample information. I'm going to go ahead and start a chat and see what I can come up with. Looking at my laptop, it is a free program, but it can give wrong information. That's interesting. Be careful.